Hello and welcome to Blender Bite Size. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make this material procedurally in Blender. Feeling lazy? You can support this channel and skip the hard work by grabbing the blend file for this material from Gumroad for just a pound. Feeling flush? Feel free to throw some of that coin my way using the coffee link in the description below the video. Okay, so let's get started with this. I've already got my object loaded. I'm in the shading tab. I'm going to enable viewport shading. I'm using the cycles render engine and I've got a principled shader already applied. Now I am going to add another shader, which is a glossy. So press shift A to search for that. And to mix that together or to get them together, I'm gonna to add them as opposed to mix them. So plug that in, there we go. Right, now on the principled shader, specular we're gonna to drop to zero and the tint. The roughness and the metallic, uh, metallic, metallicness, whatever. Uh, we're gonna control some other way, so we'll come back to those in a while. First up, we're going to add a Voronoi texture. So shift A, Voronoi texture, drop that in. And we're going to plug that into the base color. We're going to set it to distance to edge with a scale of 1.5. We'll be adding a color ramp between that and the base color. setting the interpolation to cardinal and moving the white value to uh, quite a low value. So let's say 0 0.05. The black value we're going to move to 0 0.025 and we're going to change it to Point 0.1 on a value to give us a sort of a gray. We'll obviously need to add a mapping and texture node to that. So press uh, control T if you've got the node wrangler and add on enabled. If you haven't, you can always search for those in the normal way. Take the object um, output from that into the vector of the mapping node. Select those four, press Shift D to duplicate and bring them down. We can actually get rid of these last two and take the object output from the first texture coordinate into the vector of the second Voronoi texture. Change the value here, the scale value to 1.6. change the interpolation to constant oops change the first first value back to a black and drag that white super close to it so 0 0.01 maybe we're going to add a mix rgb to get those two together Put the bottom one in the top slot so they kind of cross over. And you can see what's happening there. Change this uh, mix mode or blending mode to add. And change the factor to 0.4. Next up, move your texture coordinate off a bit. And we'll make a couple of changes. We're actually going to take the vector from the mapping node into the vector of the Voronoi texture. And that means we can get a noise texture in here. 
and a mix RGB next to that. Take the object from the texture coordinate into color two. Change the value to 0.55. The detail scale to 10 and leave everything else the same. So that's our marbling texture mostly going on there. Now, next up, we're going to add another Voronoi texture. Pop it back here somewhere. Add the usual things, mapping and texture coordinate, and take the object in there. Change this to distance to edge. That's on the Voronoi texture. And the scale to two. And we are going to add a mix RGB just in here. Plug this into color one. We're actually going to switch these two around. Change this um, blending mode to multiply. Just leave that there. And next we're going to pop some bits in between this Voronoi texture and that. So color ramp first. Then a magic texture. Pop that in just below the color ramp. Change the depth to one. Scale to 0.2. And distortion to 2.5. Grab a mix RGB. Plop that in just after the color ramp. And take the color from the magic texture into the color of the mix shader. Take the vector from the second mapping node into the vector of the magic texture. Change the blending mode to linear light and the factor to 0.2 and enable clamping. Next up, another color ramp. Plop that in there. And just before we move on, we're going back to this original color ramp, changing the interpolation to cardinal and moving the white value to position 0 0.08. 0 .08. Now to get those cracked lines into the sort of wavy things, we're going to do our trick that we did before with the noise texture and the mix so I can select those duplicate them and drop them in here take the object into the vector and the object into color 2 then the color into the vector change the scale to 6 detail to 20 Roughness to 0.45 and distortion to 0.2. Factor on the mix shader to 0.5. Okie dokie, right, back over to this color ramp here. I'm zooming in because I'm going to be working quite detailed. We're going to add a third color. And this one we're going to try and make a goldy color. So we'll go somewhere around here. So let's say 0.1 on the hue, 0.9 on the saturation and 0.5 on the value. It's kind of where we want it. Now we're going to cram these together. So let's shove that to 0.0. 
two and this white value to 0 0.04 that gets us a very nice fine inclusion maybe 0 0.05 for that second one okay now we want to add a little bit of depth so we are going to add a bump node and plug that into the normal set the value at 0.15 the distance we are going to take from this add mix shader the height we are going to take from this color ramp And then for the glossy shader, we're going to take the color from the multiply into the color slot of the glossy shader. And you can see how that intensified it. Let me take that out. It's kind of a bit muted. Plug it in and it's more defined. Now we've got a couple more things to do in relation to the metallic settings and the roughness settings. So we are going to take the color ramp with the gold color in it into the metallic slot. But we're going to shove an invert node on that path and set the value to one. Next, we're going to take the color from the add mix shader into the roughness. And again, we're going to drop in an invert node in there. And it's hard to see, but what this is doing is basically giving us some depth in just those gold areas so that basically as the light hits it in different areas, it will be picked up quite well. Now for the roughness on the glossy shader, we're gonna drop that down, let's say to 0.15, so that we get this nice, almost polished look, but it's still got um, a tiny little bit of texture in it. And because of the bump, we can actually pick out some of the detail of the inclusions as well. Okay, for this add node, enable clamping and I think we may be just about done actually one more thing to do we are going to take the color from this multiply into oh no we already have the base color no that's it I think we're all done Okay, there you go. So I'm going to send that off to render again using the cycles render engine and a thousand samples and I'm applying the denoise filter. So let's see what we get. Okay, and then we have a beautiful marbled texture with some gold veining through it. I hope you found this useful and will give it a thumbs up uh, and obviously subscribe for future future content. In the meantime, thanks for watching.